I'm either going to piss everybody off or make everybody happy. I have a feeling I know which one it's going to be. Traction's engine guard or Wingstuff's belly pan? Which one should you buy? I probably have had more questions about this in the last couple of months than any other topic. Well, I've installed both. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Man's Reviews. Today we're going to talk about the traction engine guard compared to the Wingstuff belly pan. They both do essentially the same thing, they just have different names. Before I get started, I want to make sure everybody understands that neither Traction nor Wingstuff are a sponsor of this video. In fact, uh, neither one sponsored the installation videos I did on either product. In fact, Traction nor Wingstuff have ever been a sponsor on this channel. So I guess from a financial perspective, perspective, I have no dog in this fight. I just want to make that clear right up front. I, I know Max. I've met Max. I know Rick at Wingstuff. I've met Rick. Uh, I like both of them. I think they're both great guys. Um, so I just want to get that way, get that out of the way right up front. Let's just talk about the two products and give you a little bit of my history and background when it comes to belly pans. Now, on a previous Goldwing, in fact, on I think every Goldwing I've owned, I've had some form of engine protection. Now, on the previous generation Goldwings, uh, that came in the form of a Tulsa belly pan. I don't even know if they still make Tulsa belly pans. I know Show Chrome has one uh, that's very similar. And basically, it was just a, th a thin sheet of, I believe it was, I don't know if it was aluminum or stainless steel. I'm not sure what it was. It was just very thin, very flexible metal. And it did provide some minimal protection against rocks or gravel and things like that. However, I've had a lot of comments on my videos stating that, you know, if Honda thought it was necessary to have a belly pan or some sort of engine protection, they would have included it on the Goldwing. And I'm here to tell you that that is not a valid argument. So there's a lot of things that Honda doesn't include on the Goldwing uh, that a lot of us feel are necessary. Um, you could make the same argument about a comfortable seat. You could make the same argument about a lot of things that we, if, if Honda included everything on the Honda Goldwing that people wanted or needed, there would be no aftermarket for products. So that argument doesn't hold water. I personally had an experience with a previous Goldwing, a previous generation Goldwing, where I hit a piece of scrap iron on the highway. I was going about 65 miles an hour. And uh, there was a pickup truck in front of me, and it was my fault. I was probably following too closely behind him. And he went over something in the road, and by the time I saw it, uh, there was no way for me to safely swerve and miss it. And it was a, a fairly large chunk of scrap iron. I felt like it was probably better just to hit it head on than it was to try to swerve and then accidentally catch it while I was leaning. Plus, I didn't have really time to look to see if there was traffic on the left or right. So I felt like the safest thing to do was to just hit it straight on. Now, in that split second or two seconds or whatever the time was between the time I saw this made that decision to go ahead and hit it straight on. Of course, I let off the throttle. Um, I had just accepted that I was going to go down. I This was a big enough piece of scrap iron that I felt like it would probably break the front wheel, certainly blow out the tire, uh, break the front wheel. And uh, you know, from there, I wasn't thinking about anything else. I was trying to prepare myself. And you can do this literally within a one or two second period. 
prepare myself for the eventuality that I'm going to go down on this highway. Now, fortunately, in my mind, I knew there wasn't a tremendous amount of traffic and there was nobody right directly behind me. I knew that. So I felt like maybe I can tumble and survive this. I mean, all of this is going through my head in a period of one or two seconds. Well, I hit this piece of scrap iron and I hit it straight on and it made this horrendous noise. And I was immediately stunned that I was still upright on the bike. I couldn't believe it didn't break the front wheel or bust the front suspension or break or blow out the front tire. I'm still rolling. Of course, the throttle is off. The first thing I did was I looked in my right rear view mirror to see if there was anybody coming up behind me on the right side because I knew I'd need to pull over to the shoulder just to check for damage. And when I looked in my right rear view mirror, all I could see was just billowing smoke coming out of the exhaust. I suspected I knew what that meant. So I looked down and I saw my oil light on the dash and I just immediately reached down, turned off the key and turned off the bike, pulled in the clutch and just coasted. So I'd say within three seconds to four seconds after the impact, I was able to turn off the motorcycle and uh, that probably saved the engine and I was able to coast over to the right. Of course, oil is everywhere. There's oil all over the highway. Basically what this did, this piece of scrap iron, when I hit it, it must have kicked up and literally sheared off the oil filter and it hit on that left front corner of the engine case it went right through that belly pan. It just stripped it right off, busted the front cowl, cracked the engine case at the point where the oil filter uh, goes onto the bike and uh, had to be towed in. So for those of you that don't think this can happen, it can happen. Um, you can uh, strike road debris and in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I don't know about what it's like where you live, but one of the biggest dangers we have on a motorcycle is road debris. There's crap everywhere around town, especially on these highways, because you've got all these landscape guys with all these trailers and they hit those bumps and stuff flies out of the trailer. So there's no telling what you're going to run over. Bottom line is towed the bike to the shop 12,000 some odd dollars later. Uh, if it had been another $800 worth of damage, they would have totaled the bike. The insurance company did pay for all the repairs. Fortunately, I had Dairyland insurance. Uh, I would say they, they were pretty good. They did a good job. I was fortunate to have an excellent dealer with an excellent uh, Honda service tech. Unfortunately, he's no longer there. He'd been there, you know, he'd been a service tech for 20 years and he's now retired, unfortunately. Uh, he did a brilliant job of rebuilding the bottom end of the engine. But like I say, it was $12,000, and I believe it was about six weeks the bike was out of commission. So when you talk to me about not needing some sort of engine protection, uh, you know, it doesn't hold water with me because I've experienced this firsthand. I know what can happen. Now, I did have a quote-unquote belly pan on that bike, but like I say, this just sheared it right off. Had I had more substantial protection, which did not exist to my knowledge, didn't exist for the previous generation Goldwing, all you could get were these little thin belly pans, uh, it might have survived. I don't know. There, we'll never know. So, in my opinion... Either the wing stuff or the traction is better than nothing. And you don't have to be going down gravel roads or dirt roads or the Alcan Highway to experience things hitting your engine. You can do this on the nicest four-lane, six-lane highway in the country because of road debris anywhere. It could be anywhere. So I'm not a believer that uh, you don't need this. I believe that it is necessary. And even more so now, because would this happen today and you suffer this kind of damage? 
Good luck getting any replacement parts out of Honda right now. You can't even buy Homelink. It's on back order for months. So if you sustain engine case damage today, your bike might be out of commission for a year because of the supply shortage and the supply chain and all that. So I think it's even more important today to have some sort of protection for your engine. Okay, I've made some notes. Forgive me for looking away periodically to check these notes because I want to make sure I cover everything there is to cover in this video. Like I said before, in my opinion, it's just my opinion, either the wing stuff, belly pan, or the traction engine guard is better than nothing. Now, wing stuff is the value option at $179. And of course, these prices can always change. Traction, on the other hand, I would say it's a bit beefier, a bit thicker, but it comes in at a higher price, about $279 to $299, depending on which one you get. They have two different versions of the traction engine guard. I installed the wing stuff first, and just a little bit of history, that product went through several iterations. I actually had four different versions of that wing stuff belly pan before it finally got to what it is today. It's much thicker than it was than the first one I received, but they went through a lot of changes. The developer, the designer went through a lot of changes on the product. And one of the biggest complaints that people had with the video that I put out was that you had to bend the mounting brackets in the front. They had to bend around those exhaust that exhaust manifold or the exhaust pipes. Uh, apparently now they do provide those uh, brackets are pre-bent. You no longer have to bend them yourself, uh, which I'm sure they did that originally because it was easier to ship. They didn't have, you know, they could ship it in a flatter package. But they are now providing those pre-bent. You no longer have to do that. It mounts to the front engine guard brackets or the bolts that hold the front engine guard on, the engine protection, the tip over protection, two points in the front, and then a single bolt in the rear, which is like a, a, a strange little T-bolt. They Fortunately, they went with that instead of that. They originally had this big long bolt you had to, it was weird. But now they have this T-bolt that you put up under the frame and uh, it's a little fiddly to get it in there and get the nut on it. So what I recommend you do is get another nut the same size. I believe it's a, it's either a 13 or a 14 millimeter. I don't remember off the top of my head. Install that T-bolt with a washer and tighten it down and then put the plate on with another nut underneath. That way you don't have to fiddle with that little T-bolt every time you take that plate off to change your oil. So it mounts one bolt in the rear, two bolts in the front. If you've watched my videos, I'll put links to these videos in this video so that you, I think I'll be up here, uh, so that you can uh, watch those installation videos if you want to. The traction engine guard uh, mounts completely differently. It mounts using some engine cover bolts that you remove, the Honda bolts that you remove from the, these engine covers. And some of you will remember that I installed this on my 2018 Goldwing. And I removed them, I guess, maybe 10 days to two weeks later to do an oil change. And I noticed some oil on the underside of that traction uh, engine guard, just a little trail of oil. So I contacted Max. I think I did. A, I, I know I did a video on it and talked about it. And I think a lot of people got concerned. And uh, I sent an email to Max, which I should have done initially. I should have right immediately just contacted Max, but I didn't. And turns out that uh, he said it was just some normal seepage that when you know you remove those bolts, you might get a little oil. And, and in my case, I actually had those bolts out for quite some time because I was shooting a video. So I probably had those bolts out for, I don't know, two or three hours. I don't know. I'm just guessing. 
before I put his bolts in and installed the brackets. Turns out I've done some more long-term testing. I've reinstalled the traction engine guard, and Max was right. Uh, the seepage stopped. You know, it, it's not that uncommon to get a little bit of oil seeping out through that gasket, but, you know, once you tighten it up and torque it up to spec, uh, that, that should go away. It was just a minimal, minimal amount of oil anyway. So I was concerned, you know, obviously I was concerned when I saw oil. I thought there could be a leak, but turns out that concern was unfounded. And only, I think, a handful of people even experienced any seepage at all. So that's not an issue. Relatively speaking, both the wing stuff and the traction, I would say, are pretty easy to install. These are not difficult installations. You can install either one of these in probably 15 minutes, 20 minutes at the most. Uh, if you have the traction, I recommend that you have a torque wrench so that you can retorque those engine case bolts. But other than that, I think they're both relatively easy to install. Now, what I did is the, the four, I think it's four holes and three holes on the bottom of the traction. I did drill those out one size up. I can't remember what the size is now. I apologize, but if you check with Max's latest video, I think he tells you in that video uh, that you drill it out. It makes it a little easier to get those little uh, screws back in, those little hex screws that hold it to the bracket. Honestly, uh, both of them are a pain in the ass when it comes time to do an oil change because you do have to remove the wing stuff and the traction. They have to be removed before you can do an oil change. I was hoping on the wing stuff you'd be able to leave that rear bolt in and just swing it out of the way, but you can't. It, it just doesn't work. It hits the exhaust and it, it, you can't do that. So they have to be removed. Um, I say it's a pain in the ass. You know, it's three bolts on the wing stuff and it's, what, seven little screws on the traction. It's not the end of the world. Uh, and it's... I think it's well worth the additional, it probably takes a total of, I don't know, three minutes. It might add three minutes to your oil change to do this. But I think for the protection that you're getting, it's well worth that. I mean, even in the old days with the old belly pans, you still had to take off this plate and fight with those D Zeus, or however you say it, D Zeus connectors. They were a pain in the ass. So, yeah, it's a little bit of a pain to remove this to change the oil. But in my opinion, it's well worth that additional three minutes or whatever it takes. Now, let's talk about the protection that both of these provide. Um, it's not like I've tested these. It's not like I've done impact tests. I'm not going to take my motorcycle out and high center it on a concrete law or a log or piece of concrete just to let you know how effective these belly pans or engine guards are. And a lot of people have raised concerns over the uh, traction model because it, since it is using engine bolts, that if you were to high center the motorcycle on a log, let's say, what the hell are you doing on a gold wing going over a log anyway? But let's say you did. Uh, and that force or that energy would be, you know, delivered to those bolts. And it could either break the bracket or the probably the bolts most likely be break. You would probably have some leakage. Uh, I doubt if it would do any permanent damage to your engine. Uh, certainly less damage. If you've high centered on a log or a concrete block or something, you're going to sustain damage. That's not what these are designed for. This is not designed for an adventure bike. This is designed for a Honda Goldwing that's primarily primary purpose is for commuting and going on the highway. It's a touring bike or a sport touring bike, whatever you want to call it. It's not an adventure bike. So, if you're going on the Alcan Highway on your Goldwing, I have no idea why you're doing that in the first place, but you're not going to be out in the woods riding a Goldwing where you're going to potentially, hopefully, high center this bike. 
Um, and if you do, you're probably going to sustain some damage somewhere. I don't know where, but that's not what they're for. They're for road debris. You know, these are to prevent things like what happened to me, where you hit something in the road, it flips up, and instead of cracking your engine, it strikes this belly pan or this engine guard. I also would not recommend using a lift with either one of these. If you were to put a motorcycle lift under the wing stuff, those aluminum brackets are going to bend, and it's, this plate is going to come into contact with the bottom of the engine. If you, and I don't know what's going to happen with the traction. I don't know if that plate is strong enough to not bend or flex. I mean, you're talking 900 pounds. I just wouldn't recommend it. I think you should remove the plate, use whatever mechanism the motorcycle lift company, as far as a, some sort of jig or whatever they have in place to, so you don't damage your uh, exhaust pipes, but use whatever method they recommend to raise your motorcycle. It may not cause any damage. And if you've done this, if you if you have either of these belly pan or engine guard installed on your bike and you've used them with a motorcycle lift, put it in the comments down below. I'm sure a lot of people would love to know. But right now, I'm not going to recommend that you do it because I don't know if it could cause damage or not. Now, I'm just going to give you my uneducated opinion. I would say that as far as protection goes, the tra traction provides a 9 out of 10. I would say it is the, the beefier option of the two. It feels more substantial. I'm just going from a gut feeling, and this is just a personal opinion, that if money's no object and you don't mind spending the extra $100, the traction is probably going to provide better protection. That's just my opinion, purely a guess. Since I've installed both, I've seen both, and I've you know felt them, held them in my hands. I'd say the wing stuff is probably a seven to seven and a half out of ten. I have no basis for any of these numbers. I'm just this is just off the top of my head. Still. I think it provides good protection. And I think for most people, in most situations, uh, with the things that do come into contact with your, with your engine case, the wing stuff is probably fine. They're both better than nothing. Now, I have done, I have ridden my bike with both of these installed. I, I ended up installing the wing stuff on a friend's 2018 so he could do long-term testing while I did more long-term testing on the traction. I spoke with him just a couple of days ago. I think he's had it on for more than a month. He's had no issues. We were concerned when we installed it that it was going to make noise as he rode because even after we installed it, you could kind of tap on the bottom of that wing stuff pan and you could hear it hitting the bottom of the engine. It, it was like there was a little bit of play in it or something. I'm not sure what was causing that. But he said you cannot hear it. He said it did not. There was no noise. There was no resonance. Um, so he has not had any complaints with the wing stuff belly pan. And uh, after I resolved my concerns about the oil seepage, I've had no issues with the traction on my motorcycle. Uh, I did modify the rear bracket uh, so that I could get better access to that oil drain plug in the rear for the DCT model. I think if you purchase the traction now, it has a different bracket that has a little space cut out for that rear drain plug. Um, I just went ahead and put mine on a bench grinder and ground down enough so I can easily get to that rear a drain bolt, no problem. So I know that you want to hear that there's a winner. I know that you want to um, hear me say, don't buy this one, buy this one. This is the best. And honestly, uh, I can't say that. I think they're both good. I think they're both good products. I think, uh, I think I've told you what I think. Uh, that's my take on it. Uh, I'm either going to piss everybody off or make everybody happy. I have a feeling I know which one it's going to be. 
Hey, if you enjoyed this video and you got any value out of it, please give it a thumbs up. And I'll put links in the description of this video to both the Traction and the Wingstuff products. So if you choose to order, I get no commission. As I said before, these are not sponsors. I get no commission. I'm just doing this to make it easier for you to get to them if you want them. Um, and that's, that's it. I've told you everything I can tell you. I will see you on the next Cruise Man's Reviews.